I think I found it. I'm not exactly sure what I found, but I found it. I'll tell you what, it's perfect for October. I'm sorry, my brain is a little scrambled right now. We were talking about one of the most grotesque things that I've ever seen. Introducing the Brothers Grunt. Now, just looking at these characters makes me insanely nauseous. How do you instantly fail in the character design department? The answer is simple. Make it look like their mere existence is painful. Make it look like every second that they live is racked with the pain that you can only imagine through the lens of your worst nightmares and most twisted fantasies. Why are their veins so visible? Why does their skin look dead? Their eyes are all jaundiced. It feels like we should take them to the hospital as soon as possible, but it also looks like you can't because on the way there, they die being so frail. So, this show was meant to wrap around music videos because at the time, MTV still had those. And this definitely seems to be why MTV doesn't have music videos anymore. Yeah, anything shown in between this, you'd have a negative experience of almost immediately. The premise of the show is that the brothers Grunt are on their way to find the Chosen One, one of their brothers who panicked and ran away. It's a bunch of cliches tied together by nothing but grotesque imagery. And in the first episode, we figure out the concept behind it. This episode starts in a peaceful park with an old woman feeding some pigeons, and she pulls out one of the brothers by his eye socket. Yeah, this show came out in the mid-90s, the heyday of everyone trying to rip off Ren and Stimpy. I find it actually ironic, everyone trying to rip off Ren and Stimpy, that when MTV finally did get Ren and Stimpy, they used it to try to rip off South Park. Also, the only ones who weren't trying to get Ren and Stimpy was Nickelodeon, which was actively trying to suppress it. My, how times have changed. So this brother Grunt, he has a name but I don't give a fuck, brings the pigeon down to the underground lair with his brothers, who all have some kind of animal for some unexplained reason. The mentor guy says the brothers have completed their studies and meditations. Then we take a trip up the mentor's nose because I don't know. On the back of those, I, I, I don't, I don't even know what to call them. We follow the mentor as he uses a rake to open up flesh doors, and he finds them, still grotesque looking and in some kind of sludge. But first, they must be cleansed. Because lip movement is completely optional. Okay, what the hell do these things consider cleansing? Because I really don't want to know. Lotion, water, and breath mints that they all seem disturbed by. Then the mentor rubs the ass of a duck on all of their heads, except for one guy. The bird gets frightened and he is described as the chosen one. His name is Harry, and he doesn't want to be the chosen one. They have a celebration in some not funny ways, like trying to create the human centipede, when the chosen one flat out disappears. He tosses away his crown and cape. I have no idea why. Usually in stories like this, it's because the chosen one has way too many grand expectations on him that he just can't live up to. Here, however, we are given absolutely no explanations. I know that these are largely wraparound segments, but you can't just move the plot in random directions without explanation. And if you're saying that between two and four minutes isn't enough, you're wrong! Both the Gregory Horror Show and the Domo anime had shorts that were comparable to the length of this, and they both managed to tell the audience all needed information. Honestly, plot-wise, that's a major problem with this episode. It's in such a rush to get through the beginning, to get to the journey, that it doesn't really explain anything, or get any investment. It should have been two or three episodes instead of just one. Because of this, it gives the characters no personality of any kind. It doesn't even delve into the world very much. I know hardly anything about these creatures, or their society, or their relationship with humans. A good version of this type of thing would have done all of this. The brothers' grunt didn't do any of these things. On top of that, the gross-out genre doesn't really lend itself to epic adventures that the Brothers Grunt tried to do. The rules of reality constantly change to get the maximum effect in gross-out, which is the exact opposite of something like an epic adventure. The only funny thing about this show is that MTV thought it would be a good answer to replacing Beavis and Butthead to appease moral guardians. And I'd go on, but the first episode is over and I can't stand looking at it anymore. Now next time, next time on Animated Atrocities, we're going to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys catch the finale of Rick and Morty? But seriously, if I ever hear Beth and Jerry have another fight, as long as I live, it will be too fucking soon.